Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and this is Corvettes and Crosby. Oh, that feels good to say. We had our first Corvette episode of the season uh, earlier this week, you know, getting ourselves all preemptively set up for some things going over the news. And now I got two Corvettes here for you guys. I got another uh, down at the factory that's a doozy that should be here hopefully next week. Uh, and these are the last of my 22 model years and we already have the 23s uh, that we have scheduled for production beginning uh, at the very beginning of May. So I have already um, 2023 model years that are getting assigned TPWs. I should have another two that are going to get assigned, sorry, another three that are going to get assigned um, what I would assume would be probably mid-May and uh, knock on wood, knock on anything that's wood can't find anything other than my head that we're going to get that windfall just in a 23 model year instead of a 22. That might be a blessing in disguise for some of you guys if you're looking at getting some of the new options that we were talking about in yesterday's episode. Um, well, we're going to go through this one. This is a 1LT Z51 in red mist metallic. And then over here, we've got our second one that's coming off. It's got base wheels, but not for long. That's a good clue for you guys. What else have we got on here? Well, on the top end here, we got another Z51, the same kind of wheels with that carbon flash finish. We got some Trident spokes in the sterling silver on that one. We've got base wheels with a, a, a edge red on this one here. A Z51 with bright red calipers, base wheels, and another base wheel with the uh, edge red, and another red in the bright, with a Z51 and a base wheel. So a lot of a lot of red calipers on this truck. That's interesting to say the least. Uh, you don't see that every day. How was the border today? Was it busy? Oh, we got a, we got a, a quiet guy. It might be too loud for him to talk to us. We'll go over and start looking at the other one that we have here and see red mist on black i love it we got this is i kid you not yesterday is when i was filming and it was snowing like crazy and look at it today that is just wild there's still some snow on the front end of these trucks over here but i just can't believe the comparison between yesterday to today you still got some snow there from the from yesterday it's supposed to be 24 degrees celsius tomorrow which is just wild to go from the the third coldest day ever recorded in London, Ontario, Canada yesterday to then having 24 degrees uh, the day before. I have magnolia trees at my house and I looked at a photo uh, from last year and my magnolias had already bloomed and they're already starting to die off. So they haven't even budded yet this year, which is just wild as a comparison for us up in Canada. Our driving season has been cut short. Hopefully that means that we have a late driving season and goes into December but we'll, we'll see what we have. So we're gonna pause the screen here if you wanted to see what is on this specific build. VIN number is the 21,000s for this. So we still got at least another five or 6,000. I can't remember the exact amount that they plan on doing for the 22 model year, but this one is in the 21,000s for the VIN. We've got a jet black interior on this one with a nice baseball stitching. I've gone on about this before how on the one LTs, it's actually kind of a very nicely designed um, speaker cover that's on here just because um, it's black. And then I have C8 trims, which I'm gonna be working with on doing a carbon fibre um, trim package. And then I'm also gonna be looking at trying to see if I can remove this speaker cover and put the stealth package in on my own on a retrofit because I have a 2020 and that was not available at the time. I'm very jealous for you 23 owners. There's gotta be a silver lining in the fact that you're getting your Corvette now instead of when we got ours earlier and that would be the fact that there are new options that you can design on your corvette including the exhaust i had an individual uh, chris that reached out from thornbury uh, this morning and he was talking to me about exhausts and then i had an individual from new brunswick that reached out to me this morning and asked me about exhaust and they two they had two really good questions first there's a canadian company named mbrp that actually builds their exhaust in i believe ohio or pennsylvania and MBRP makes a C8 exhaust that's remarkably cheap. My father taught me this, nothing in life is free. And there is a reason why it's very cheap and that's because 
Apparently, from what I've been hearing, there is some resonating issues that come about when this thing goes into the active fuel management mode, which is where we have it go into a four banger to save some fuel costs. On the C7s, if you guys remember, there was a vibration that would happen. They reinforced the tunnel and they did a lot to make sure that that vibration when it goes into four banger mode was reduced. But what I'm hearing from people is that the MBRP exhaust is a little bit more of a drone than what most people would like. And um, we are, I haven't, I haven't had one in particular that was on the highway that I was driving. It sounded cool when I saw it. It was a little bit more exotic, like Lamborghini-esque. I guess I wanted to go with the AWE because it sounded more like a C7 and what I thought a Corvette should sound like. So that's why I did it. But I also did the touring exhaust, which had that 180 backflow technology, basically a nice muffler to help out for when it went into four banger mode. So that was the first question of the day was, have I heard anybody that um, is having the same issue with their MBRP exhaust? If you are, please let me know about what it's like when you're in the active fuel management mode. The second was, if you already have a Corvette that's a 2020 or 21 or 22, is there a way for you to be able to get the black, black tips? I don't know yet, but I have a feeling that you're gonna need to find a professional welding place and not a GM dealership to be able to take off the tips and weld the new ones on if we were to order it from the parts department. And I don't even know if this is an option that I can order yet. What's gonna most likely happen, and I'm giving away a lot here, is I would wait for one to come in with that. I would then decode the VIN, find out if there's a part number from that VIN that has it on the vehicle and see if then I could order it from the parts department. But that's that's for a later day. Um, what else did we, oh, uh, also, if you guys could do me a favor, uh, Chris asked if if anyone had been receiving their, their, um, their Corvette award, you know, the plaque that you get that's painted in the color and it has the VIN number on it that GM sends to you. For some reason, he hasn't received his even though he got his Corvette in July of 21. And I was just wondering if anyone else was in the same boat. So if you are a Canadian and you got a 21 Corvette, can you please chime in if you've got your award or your gift from General Motors yet as uh, he has not got it. And it's been, uh, you know, well over 10 months. So I, I, I think he should have had it by now, but I have no idea because I have not uh, been following up with that recently. So we're going to unpack this one. The owner for the... Well, I guess I should just tell you, it's Silver Flare. Uh, he's coming in, so he'll be unwrapping that shortly. We're gonna do a little unwrapping ceremony with his. That one is mine, so let's get in the Cars and Crosby experience. This one here is from another salesman. I'll feature it, but I won't have a lot of insight on what's gonna happen to it because it's not my customer, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, guys, stay tuned. Talk about what 24 hours will do to the weather here. Yesterday was the third coldest day in history in London, Ontario. All this snow and stuff that came down, it was like an absolute storm. It's all going away. I love it. I'm just going to give this a little drop kick, show that snow who's boss. And I hope to see you in at least 10 months because I got these Corvettes that I got to go. I'm, I'm ear to ear. This is it, guys. We're back into it. I don't like to talk a lot about Corvettes over the winter because it just gets you excited. It's like if I was a kid, I wouldn't start asking my kid in July what he wants for Christmas because you're just going to get him pumped up and he's just going to have to sit on it. And that's how I feel about Corvettes. Luckily, I've had a lot of trucks and full-size SUVs to keep me busy with it with, when it was outside of driving season. But we're back, baby. I've got three Corvettes to talk about today. We're going to talk about trade appraisals and I have a full feature episode coming out on that. But this ended up being a really good example of what to look for and how to evaluate a trade-in and what I do to deduce the value of it. It all kind of stemmed from watching Jay's garage. He had a gentleman that had a 54 on and it was remarkable to see how they went through the grading process for the NCM um, and Bloomington Gold process and how they had to keep it to original. And one of the things that stood out to me was that you can't get a hundred. There's no such thing as getting a score of a hundred. And I've always thought that that was the case as well. Um, things are moving fast right now and three hours after I posted the episode about the 90 it sold and the guy you know he was a good client of mine but he asked me what kind of condition was it and I said well it's about a 90 out of 100 because it's 32 years old and it was driven it has 15,000 K on it I would eat off of the surface of the dash if I needed to to prove that it was clean but it still had little things that after watching Jay's garage where they were talking about what condition and gratings and stuff I wanted to kind of be a little bit more accurate with my my grading process so i filmed an episode and gave that a condition score based on what i can see and you know i would consider myself one day to be an eligible judge for for doing 
C7s in particular and C8s on, on what the initial condition was because more often than not, I was the one that was unwrapping them from the factory. So I would know what these things were supposed to look like when they came from the factory. And that was one thing that really stood out to me about these conditions. It's not about how shiny it is. It's about how, how close to what it came from the factory did it look like. And that's what the score is based off of. So if you didn't know this already, when I do sell a used vehicle, I don't always post them on my channel, but I will always give it a score. And that score is not to be my practice for becoming an NCM judge, but it's more to give you an idea out of 100 on what kind of condition I think this vehicle is in. And in this case, I didn't actually trade in this Grand Sport, but it ended up being on camera live while I was doing this episode on what I do to evaluate one of the finest examples with 24,000 kilometers on the vehicle. So... I'm excited to show you because this is five years old. It's been driven properly. It's got about 15,000 miles on it and it still has a very high condition score. So we're gonna talk about that as well on uh, the channel today. But this is the feature part of it. This is the battle of the metallic flakes, or at least in my opinion, the top two of the top three metallic colors. There's caffeine, which we now know uh, has the most metallic flakes that's ever been put into a car. Uh, from Corvette but in my opinion these are the two heaviest hitters right now and we've been blessed with a very nice sunny day to show off red mist metallic and silver flare metallic breathe it in guys this is without a doubt the best possible way of comparing two models that change in tone and appearance on, based off the light and what we're going to focus on in particular is where the shadows are or the travel as they call it in the industry you'll notice that on the front end where the fender flare is there is a very kind of yellowish goldy tone that comes from it and that is a play on words with silver flare because it's like the sun when it's in the sun it gets that orangey sunny tone and that's the flare in silver flare but then you'll also notice that in the shadows it gets very dark almost to the point where it turns gray on the rear fender there and that is something that I really appreciate and I had on my C7 when I had it in Watkins Glen gray my favorite place to look at a C7 is right here on the rear hatch deck lid that gives you all that you need to know about this color and why I chose it it is a beautiful color for the travel in it and as you can see based on the weather let's say that this is a, an overcast day and this is a sunny day your car changes color I did that on my C8. That's one of the reasons why I chose Ceramic Matrix Gray. Some people think that it's an icy blue, like from a glacier when it's in, a, when it's in an overcast day or you have a heavy filter on your camera. But in the sun, it looks like it is a Cadillac color, which you guys will see. And I was talking about this in the last episode that G1W is coming to the Corvette. So here is your look at what the Corvette 70th anniversary color will be. We got a hot lead coming into the showroom. Here is G1W or pearl white, I think is what they're calling it. We call it crystal white on the caddies. And you have a ton of mica inside of this paint. This paint in particular is um, what, what we would call in the slang terms a pearl paint. And you can see it really well here. It is also a tri-coat, meaning that it is a thicker paint. And this being a 2019 has 42,000 kilometers on it. So about 30,000 miles. And we'll just try to see if we can find anything on it that would indicate a stone chip because it is a thicker paint. There's a nice ding that's in the, in the grill. This paint is a lot more resilient than a black color would be. And it's another reason why it's always been one of my favorite Cadillac colors. It's a little oversaturated in terms of how many people do it. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of gear away from it now, just because so many people take the easy road in getting it. But there's a reason why it's, it's the easy road because it's a really great color. It's a thick paint. It's got a lot of travel with that mica inside of it. And um, it's a classy color. I just, I already spoke my piece about what I think about it in the last episode. I'm not gonna repeat it. If you wanna see it, go back. But that is, the new 70th anniversary color on a Corvette. And there's some good undulations and, and curves and stuff that were on the mirrors and the front end of that XT fizzle. And here it is on an XT4. And then also actually, this is the previous gen Escalade. So this is what it's gonna look like if it's been out in the sun and beaten around for about five or six years. This is the same color, but it's, it's definitely at least 
four, uh, three years old because the last year of this was 2019, or sorry, 2020. So that is what G1W is gonna look like over time. So I hope that helped you out in choosing the colors. That, in my opinion, is one of the biggest things that I like to do on this channel on the Corvette component is give you guys a helping hand and consulting you on a decision. And I don't think there's a tougher decision than the color. That to me in particular has always been the hardest one because it sets the tone for everything else that you're gonna do. Your secondary and tertiary colors are all gonna be influenced on how you set the tone with your color. That's that's the, the canvas that you're gonna start with. And I've always kind of been an individual that says, hey, I'm not gonna choose the color for you, but if you have a short list, I'll tell you the pros and the cons to each of the colors and and then go from there you'll see previous episodes where we did a big featurette on red mist metallic um we did a, an amplify orange one and um caffeine when we were down in carlisle and then i've had a couple of these that came in last year this is the second year for uh silver flare and it is continuing on for 23 so that'll be the third year of silver flare it replaced blade silver which was g-a-z and GAZ is on a bunch of different GM vehicles. It's not, um, it's nothing really too exceptional. It's, it's been on a lot of things. It's usually called Quicksilver Metallic when it's not on a Corvette. So travel on the Red Mist Metallic. Well, it, this is such a deep liquidy color. It looks like it's wet when it's on here and it gives me a very McLaren-esque vibe. There's a very similar color in McLaren that if you were to debadge this, I think you could easily get away with this thing looking like it. This and Amplify Orange really make this C8 look like a McLaren. Um, not that it needs to be like a McLaren. It's not like we need to try to um, sneak it in and catfish it into the same category. It's a Corvette and that in itself is really great, but I just find it kind of funny that some of these colors make it look like different exotic vehicles that I would never have compared a uh, Corvette to even in the C7 generation. You know, I get a lot of Ferrari GTO um, and the 812 or the 712 uh, when I look at the C7 because it's basically a station wagon on steroids. Uh, but this, with it being in a mid-engine format, kind of changed how I associate it. I get a lot of European Ferrari-ish vibes from the top end being painted. This is all done from the factory because it's a uh, convertible. So the nacelles, which are these, are painted. And then the top is also painted in carbon flash metallic. And that is the second color that you can get on the 70th anniversary in a 2023. So here is carbon flash metallic. It is... Like I said in the last episode, it's just become the backdrop and the contrast to almost everything that I do in Corvette. And to think of it being used as the blank canvas, canvas is going to be um, interesting to deal with. One thing in particular that I note as a, not a downfall, but uh, an issue with carbon flash metallic is from a distance, it can look like it's gray or dirty. And I'm going to use these wheels right here as an example. We experimented with painting carbon flash metallic on C7 wheels, and we stopped doing it because customers were concerned or they didn't like how it looks like it's dirty. So this has got carbon flash metallic on it. And it kind of, when it's got the metallic flake on here, kind of looks like it's almost gray. And it doesn't contrast in these look even in this camera shot here this is the same color as this but these look gray when they get some brake dust on them and they got a little bit of dirt keeping in mind these just came off the truck so they're not that dirty um but you can see here that the tone is different between the accents in carbon flash metallic and the wheels and that is just a really weird play on the eyes because they're the same paint color you option this as, as carbon flash metallic but it looks like this is gray and then these are black i hope that this is coming on camera as clear as it is in person but we learned that long ago and we stopped painting all of our carbon flash wheels and we started just doing them in gloss black so that is one thing that i would say is uh well i don't want to beat up on the color too much because again this could take this could be personal. You could be all hot to trot for this being your color. And, and I don't want this to be the issue. But all I'm saying is, is that if you're looking for it to be a very dark, ominous color, it's not. It's going to have almost a grayish hue to the paint because of how much metal flake is in the color. So, you know, we, until I see one here, I'm not going to comment anymore. I have had some of the um, Carbon Flash Metallic Corvettes on the channel before because it was a Louis 
as well, which was our Centennial Edition back in 2012. So the Grand Sports and the Z06 in the 2012 model year came in carbon flash metallic. So this is actually the second time that I've seen the Corvette come in. And that was um, a, an episode that you'll see on the channel. I believe the Louis logo is the title photo for the, uh, for the picture on the video. So if you're wanting to see what it looks like on a Corvette, you can do that now without having to wait for the 23s to land because it was already on 2012s when we had it in a Centennial. So both of these are in a beautiful sunny light. Both of them have a ton of travel. When you look at the front end here, that's in a direct kind of um, 90 degree angle to the sun. It's got a beautiful amount of liquidity and reflection that comes from it. But in the backside, in the tush that's in the dark side of the moon here, you'll see that it does turn into a very dark, dark red. Um, and it almost loses its um, depth the depth really comes from the metal flake and you see that in the front end but when you come to the near the rear end you can't see the curves as well in the back of the corvette when it's in red mist and that's because the metal flake really accentuates these front lines when you look at the the curves that are inside of the front of the hood here it really is accentuated but then when you go to the back end it's really hard to see all those really aggressive curves that are in the door because it's on the dark side whereas if i go on this side you'll notice right away how much depth is brought into the back end and on the tushy with her hips um, with the curves when it's in the light. This here, this like on the C7 is one of my favorite places to be able to see what this paint color is all about. And in terms of a contrast, they've done a really great job in choosing black. You really can't go wrong in choosing carbon flash when you have a very um, accentuated color. Because, you know, I've used this reference before on the channel. If you've already got one lead singer on there, that thing speaks for itself and so does this one. There's no sense in hiring a second lead singer to go on stage. Have some supporting singers there or some backup singers or whatever you want to call them to help make that lead singer even better. And this is a really good color that, you know, I think Carbon Flash Metallic is made for more than ever. And it's going to be difficult to accentuate on the, the 70th anniversaries because you already have everything being accented in black as the, as the main color. So you might see people, I think they'll probably, what they'll do is paint these in just straight black when this is Carbon Flash on the vehicle. I haven't seen it in person to know for sure yet. But Carbon Flash, really great accent color. On this one, we're going to do the same thing. And you'll also see that this is a non-Z51 with a low pro. And then this is a Z51 with the profo, low pro. <laughs> Bleh, low profile spoiler. Unfortunately, we don't have the black exhaust on here, but we are looking at getting an exhaust on this. This is getting a nice healthy treatment of ACS uh, 1VM ground effects. And then we also have some Vossens going on this. I'm not too sure what's going on this one in particular. Um, it's not my customer, but I would assume based on the fact that they painted these wheels that they're not going to be doing a set of Vossens because they spent already about $1,100 Canadian on painting them. So it doesn't make sense for them to then invest in getting a set of Vossens, but I could be wrong. And I hope that they do prove me wrong in getting a set of Vossens. This is the black interior and this is a 1LT. So as I was showing you earlier, we've got the speaker covers and everything in the jet black that's on here. And then over here, we have ourselves a 2LT with the two-tone. I'm going to be a rock star and show you guys with the top off what it looks like. It's still bagged up and everything on the inside just because um, we've got to do some work on the vehicle and we want to make sure that we protect it. That's why in these shots, even though it would look better, I still leave these on. And then I also leave... I just messed up by opening the door while it was doing that. It definitely did not like that. <laughs> that was a rookie move, guys. I apologize. <laughs> I was trying to make the shot all good there. Let's see if with the door open if it will do it. No, nope, it won't. I've got to close this back up now. And hopefully I can resume the top being put on after I just got a little eager and opened it up. We're learning stuff live on camera here. Just like the last time I did this live, we found out that if it's too cold out, it won't let you open the top up which was, I think, pretty cool. And it makes sense because you don't want to brain freeze when you drive. All right, let's get inside and show you what we got now. This here is a cool cost-effective interior. This is a 2LT with adrenaline red that's done with a two-tone. With this already having a cool lead singer on the paint, we wanted to make sure that we weren't going too aggressive 
with the um, the interior. I'm just gonna show you a bit. These are your GT2 seats. Easy way to know is that it has a more uh, aggressive opening with carbon fibre. And then here is a beautiful Napa leather uh, seats that have the two-tone insert. What the whole logic with this was is that we wanted to give it a bit of red, but not a ton of red. And I think that this is a healthy amount of red to be able to get the message across that it's the secondary color. We've got our uh, edge red calipers on here as well to go with that. And once you see the wheels, you'll know why we continued with that theme. A um, little ASMR for the channel. As always, this is a fun one to do. And you can kind of see in the light here that there is a C8 logo that goes across the top. And then if you had the BV4 option, you can put 26 characters of whatever you want in that area. I've seen some pretty cool ones recently. Uh, I don't normally share a lot of the stuff on here, but one that I thought was really amazing for a license plate was worth the wait. And then the eight at the end for the C8. I like that one. In terms of some credos, there's some really good ones that I've seen for the BV4. And I'll ask the permission of the customer once they come in, if I can feature them and show them off. Um, but other than that, I think that's all for now because we will obviously feature these once they get all shined up ready for prom. And that's that on that for now. Now on to this. This is a C7 Grand Sport. It is a 2017, same year as my C7. This 17 model year is an important model year to note if you're looking for a used C7 because that was the last year that they stopped innovating on the C7 generation. As you guys know, they're making improvements right now on the C8 and then eventually may not be the case because of how popular they are. They'll start working on the C9, which is weird to start talking about. And that was the case on this. You guys will know some of the common issues that came about from the C7. For starters, they changed the dash, the steering wheel. They changed the clips to a titanium clip for the tops here. On the 15 automatic Z06s, they added an extra heat exchanger to stop the automatic transmissions um, from overheating, or sorry, the engine from overheating. The transmissions in the automatic are bigger than the manual seven speed that was in the C7. So the manuals actually had one extra heat exchanger than the, the automatics did, and they changed that in the 16 model year. So the 17 is the last year that they stopped making major improvements on this. Mind you, there was in 19 a magnetic ride control update that came to it that you can still get for a nominal cost to be upgraded on anything that has mag ride on your, your C7, but they stopped all the major upgrades. And that's one thing that I always like to note because, uh, you know, you're getting something that was the final thing, you know, Taj and them, they, they slapped themselves on the back, they dusted off their shoulders, and then they started sinking their teeth into Operation Blackjack or Project Blackjack, which was the C8 program or the code name for the C8 program. So that just gives you some insight as how long they were working on it. So if we're now in, this was a 14, for its first model year. So that was three models a year in. Maybe Taj is dusting off the cap on the C8. And as of right now, maybe he's starting to work on the C9. <laughs> this is breaking news on Car Cars and Crosby with my theories. Okay, I'm gonna go through with you guys my synopsis of what I saw on this and give you an idea of a, an abbreviated version of what I do when I'm evaluating a Corvette. First thing I do, especially with a C7 because of the low ground clearance, is I feel underneath here. There was a little bit of a neck right here that I noticed and then I can see that they retouched the um, surface on the splitter. With the amount of clearance that these things had, I'm kind of glad that this is the thing that scratched and not the actual bottom end of the front bumper, especially with it being a high metallic flake car. It's very difficult to repaint these front ends and to have them line up perfectly. So that, in my opinion, is a godsend that that is the part that's damaged and not the front end of the vehicle. So if you see that, it's not a bad idea to, to just maybe replace it if it gets wrecked, but that's what it's there for. It's there for aesthetics, a mild amount of performance, but more importantly, it's kind of like a bumper within a bumper to make sure that your actual bumper doesn't need to be replaced. Um, minor little things on the front end just from it being driven for uh, 24,000 kilometers, but nothing that I need to report that was major on it. The secondary color on this is definitely the chrome accents that you see on the wheels. These wheels are something that we're going to unpack on for a little while here because there's a lot going on in my detective skills. First things first, this has got regular brakes, but it has cup twos. So that tells me right off the bat that this was done after the fact because you can't get cup twos with regular brakes. You could only get cup twos if you were having it in a Z07. So the fact that this has got regular brakes and cup twos means that they purchased these after the fact. 
Now, that leads me to believe that maybe they were trying to track the vehicle, but it's an automatic. So that doesn't make any sense from a track day perspective. And the second thing that I can look at is if there has been any heat cycles that have been done to the tires. They get kind of pitted like an orange, uh, orange peel, and I don't see any of that on that. So these have not been through a heat cycle, yet he has racing slicks basically on this car. That's an interesting thing to note. And then on the inside, you know, one clue right away that I always look at is the door sills and he PPF them all. These have all been treated in a PPF film and they're brand new. I then look inside of here. I see a little bit of a sheen on here. He leather treated it recently on the interior and it is immaculate inside of here. You can see the, the armor all that he's gone a little too overzealously on. That can be honestly a safety thing when it gets on the um, mats here. Um, because then it slips when you're driving in a manual on your feet. So don't get too trigger happy with this stuff. It's not always a good thing to have it everywhere because then your steering wheel and everything gets all slicked and it can become a safety issue. So the interior, I would give it a 95 without a doubt after going through it. And you'll see that in more detail on my uh, channel. But here, if you're looking at the channel, is something that I noticed that really ticked me off and I'm going to point it on the camera they had a dealer sticker put on here and i was wondering why they did that especially when the guy still owned the vehicle and it was because they were hiding a scratch underneath the dealer emblem that shame on that dealership for doing it is really uh shady and it sucks because we obviously took off their previous dealers sticker and now we found that and now we're gonna have to get it professionally blended in and treated so unfortunately my rating on it has gone down from where i originally rated it on my channel for the evaluation episode, especially because of that little blunder that happened. So still a cool car. It's an automatic 24,000 kilometers, has a stage two arrow, so full length rocker panels and the winglets, but not the little wicker bill in the center. It's in a great color. It's got racing slicks on it, which you could switch out to something different if you wanted. Those are about $3,000 set of tires. And chrome is the accent, which we can easily take off put a set of Austins on it and put some black badges and make this a very sinister vehicle like it was on mine when I had it in the C7 where it was all black and Watkins Glen Grey. All right, guys, I think that's enough for one day. We're going to do a follow-up episode when these uh, come out. Um, I've got another really crazy C8 coming up that's going to have a lot of fun things coming on it. I also have from my friends down at Vossen some new Vossen wheels that are going to be coming out. So I'm going to be doing a feature on those once they arrive i'll be one of the first people to have one of the new sets i'm very fortunate that i was able to purchase uh, one of these and i'm going to be putting it on a project that i have coming up and uh yeah i think that's enough for now if you guys have any interest in reaching out about color questions and stuff like that make a comment because then i can comment to everybody and everyone can read in on it i'm still interested in seeing what you guys think about the uh, 70th anniversary colors and if there's any suggestions on what new colors should come about maybe we can pass it on or maybe you guys can send me the link to a forum feed where it has a lot of uh you know conversations about that kind of stuff because i'm not probably the first person to want to have an inquiry on that kind of stuff I'm Morgan Crosby from Finn Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada. Stay tuned for more awesome content and happy motoring.